since CS450 is a senior level course, or at least a 400 level course, a lot of you might be about to graduate or graduating this year. And some of you don't even know what a PhD is. And since this is a university, I thought, I always think it's a good um, practice to show you, give you a, a short overview of what is a PhD program, what you're expected to do, and what you can get from it. So first, what does it mean? PhD means a doctrine of philosophy. And the objective of a PhD is a degree where you will master a subject completely and you will advance the state of the art. So that is to say, advance the state of everything that we know. You will do something that no one has ever done and you will need to show the impact of that. So this is the highest uh, academic degree. So for that, it is a special kind of degree and it is quite rare. Only 4.5% of the US population has a PhD. For some people, there is a certain prestige in the title of a doctor. So I'm, I also give you this source that I would uh, suggest you to, to read a bit about it. Uh, this is basically a, um, a graph showing how many, what is the percentage of the population per degree. And as you can see, uh, in 2018, we had a, around 50% of the people had a bachelor's degree and a PhD just 4.5%. Master's degrees, a master's degree, just 20%. So in the next um, few videos, I'm going to be talking about these five points. So first, why should you join graduate school? And graduate school includes, as you know, ma the master's program and the PhD program. Then I'll, I'm going to give you a few reasons not to join the graduate school so that you understand whether it's something that suits your needs and your interests. Next, I'm going to talk about why should you choose CS, computer science, as the subject of your graduate degree. And then we're going to go through a bit of the structure of a PhD. What are your expectations? What are you, what you should achieve? What should your supervisor provide you? And what should you provide to your supervisor? And finally, we're going to talk a bit about how to do a PhD effectively. So first question is, why should you join graduate school? And there are many reasons, many valid reasons to do so. A popular one or common one is the intellectual curiosity. A lot of people like to learn and like to build things. And a PhD and especially grad school is a great place for that. In grad school, usually the courses that you have, you're, you are expected to be more independent, uh, to be doing the learning more on yourself, where, where you just are given pointers to know where you should go and what you should achieve. And your role is to use those pointers, learn by yourself, and try to achieve. It is a specialized degree, which means after graduation, you will be a better professional. You will learn many um, skills that are very important for um, a lot of industries. And as you will see, there is quite a lot of work for PhD graduates and very well paid work. It is definitely something that people do, people that want autonomy, people who want to work on their own project with their own goals, with their own time scale. Graduate school is really good for that, especially PhD program where you are, you have quite a bit of time to, to work on your own project. There's also the point of paying, um, the, the, how much you're going to get paid. Generally, graduate programs. Um, so a after you get a master's and a PhD, you will, you will generally, you know, whether you go whatever job you get, you generally will be paid more. And also, PhD degrees, that's also something that it might be important, are fully funded. 
so you don't pay a single dime to do to do uh, to study for your PhD uh, degree. So you will be studying and you will be paid to study, which is something that usually doesn't happen when you're doing a bachelor's. So why should you not join graduate school? Well, one reason is there there are quite a few of traits that are required from a PhD student. One of them, so here I'm talking a bit more about PhD program. Um, so a PhD program generally takes around five years. Sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes a bit more. Um, and you will be asked to work on the same subject for that amount of time or for the majority of that time. So at least for four or three, three or four years, you'll be working on the same project. So you need to be okay with that. You need to be um, happy to be working on the same project. So if you're someone who, you know, likes to work a bit on something and then change and work on something else, maybe a PhD is not a great thing for you. Maybe a master's program is good for you, but a PhD might not be the best fit. Um, it is something with a higher workload than a, a bachelor's. And this is because of what I was saying before, you really need to be self-sufficient in terms of learning. That doesn't mean you won't have uh, instructors in your courses, but the courses are just the first year of your studies. After that, you will be on your own. You will be studying something and handling a problem that no one ever did, which means no one knows that, <laughs> right? You have to be able to learn by yourself to look at other papers and learn from them. And your supervisor will have a role there, but it's more of a role of someone who has experience and knows how to study rather than knows the actual problems you're having, if that makes sense. Um, so there is a higher workload and you need to be um, efficient with your time. So that's something that you will, that you need to be to account for, right? this higher workload that you will have once you're in a graduate program. This is also true for a master's. So again, for a PhD, this five-year commitment is something that is daunting for some people. So I'm, I'm just using five-year as a approximate duration. It's not really necessarily a, a fixed thing. But you will be, you will have to work on the same subject for five years uh, and this five-year commitment might not be interesting or, or desirable for everyone you will also be required to be autonomous to to find your own um, to find your own uh, just learning material but also your own structure because each person is different and there's no sure fire way to to do to get a, to be successful in a phd so there are some resources on how to be effective, how to be efficient uh, during your PhD, but it's really something that is very personal. Um, some people do not like traveling, and if you don't like traveling, you probably don't want to do a PhD, because a lot of it has to do when you're doing a PhD is meeting other people, and you will meet other people by traveling to in other institutions or to workshops and to conferences, and you are required to do that. Generally, most PhD programs require you to publish a paper, and it, when you publish a paper, you have to present it. So if that's something you don't like, either traveling or public speaking, so perhaps a PhD is not interesting for you, you might be better off just with a master's. So another reason so these were things why you should not. Then why should you join graduate school? One reason is the increase in, in average salary. So this I took in 2019 on Payscale. So if you go to payscale.com, you can you can see an average uh, per, per field of how much people are earning. This is nationally. So this is $80,000, $82,000 per year across the country. Of course, different cities have different averages. But as you can see, you will basically, if you take a master's, you'll 
basically be earning 20,000 more per year. So this is the kind of average uh, salary just by having a master's. And if you get a PhD, it gets a bump of around 30K. So it is quite considerable. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to earn $128,000, but on average, that's what happens. And the U.S. is a great place to, to be if you have a PhD. There's a lot of jobs for people with PhDs. Uh, again, this is CS, sorry. This is not, uh, in general, any PhD. So I, I am actually going to show you the difference in fields. So you are quite fortunate that you are studying computer science. As you can see, is the highest paying uh, field. Uh, so here we're contrasting things like software engineer, software engineering, applied math, MBAs, and CS is the highest paying one. So if you take a master's and the same, if you do a PhD in computer science, so it's actually a great subject to study and a great study and a, a great subject to continue studies. Um, so next let's talk about what do you need to do while you're doing a PhD and that we're going to do in the next video.